Well, hello, traders and investors. I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. We take a look at these markets, and we're doing it from a neoclassical perspective. That means we're looking at supply and demand on the charts, asking ourselves, is there any test of something of significance? If it is, what does it tell us, and will that tell us something about the coming days? I do a show four times a week, every Monday through Thursday. is broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time. It's archived on YouTube. It's under the channel L.A. Little. If you want to subscribe, you haven't, reach up in the right-hand corner, do so. Anytime I push content that's not private, in other words, not for members only, then you'll get a notification. If you want to be a member, hit the Get Started button. Uh, there's a lot going on. Our membership uh, continues to grow and... What we're seeing is uh, people are liking this ideal of us tutoring in the neoclassical method. Teach someone to fish, they can feed themselves over life. And that's what we're trying to do here, folks. So give me a holler, get started, uh, sign up for the mentoring program, and be part of the TA Today clan. Let's get started here. Uh, I've got some uh, specific questions asked tonight. I'll take those in a minute. But let's start with the opening numbers here. Uh, let's grab that. Uh, we actually saw the S&P continue to push up today. Gains another 0.33. We were talking about last night, you know, it could go higher, and that's exactly what it did. Russell, still the leader, another three quarters. The Russell's been on a tear, continues to be on a tear. NDX is still the laggard. Big cap tech can't move. you got the socks that can't move, and biotech is still struggling. That's the majority of that index. NASDAQ broader market, of course, weighed down by the NDX, but also moves higher. So you got all of your indexes moving higher. You had Europe pull back. Europe pulls back when the dollar goes down. That makes the euro stronger, makes it hard for euro to move higher. We'll look at those charts real quick. Nikkei, same sort of thing, right? Having problems with a stronger yen. Of course, the dollar was down, down about a third of a percent a day. And that juiced the gold market up a 1.5%. We had the uh, silver market up uh, a good percentage as well. Three, almost 4% on the silver market off that dollar weakness. Fed meeting next week. And, uh, you know, expectation is they just are not going to raise the rates. And that puts the uh, foreign exchanges up and the dollar down. Let's go to the charts here. Let's start with the S&P 500. So, Tonight, you have an over-under. In other words, you get over the bar from the prior bar, right, and back under. That's an over-under. But the problem is, folks, you got more volume. So if you got more volume, that says it can go do it again and push again. And that looks to me like what it's going to try to do. If we look at the NASDAQ, NASDAQ, a little bit different of a story. Now, the NASDAQ gets over back under, has less volume. So that's an over-under after an extended move. That says it has a chance of pulling back tomorrow. If we look at the NDX, and the NDX, again, the weakest of the four, NDX can't uh, hold, has less volume, gets over, does a doji, that's an over-under as well, although it has been consolidating, so I don't know if the over-under tells us quite as much on it. Finally, the Russell, powers higher. There's nothing to stop this guy. They're like on a mission, like the Blues Brothers, straight up, a mission to God. Let's go to the uh, world markets. I want to show you real quickly here what's happening. Uh, Asia uh, has been on a tear, emerging markets on a tear with the dollar being uh, weaker. That's helping those indexes. Hong Kong is the one that's giving us a tell tonight. Hong Kong gets over back under less volume after an extended move. This one set up to try and pull back tomorrow. So we may see a little weakness come into Asia. If we go over to Europe, as I said, the DAX was pulling back. DAX was an inside bar, I believe. Let's look at it. 1018319. Your low today was 10 one, no, 177. So you actually got under. You had less volume. Uh, so that says that one can hang tomorrow. So you've got a lot of mixed pictures. That's because we have such an extended move already. Looks to me like we're going to try to grind a little bit higher and probably do the same sort of thing we did today. And that is, you know, back and forth, back and forth end up grind, grinding a little bit higher by the end of the day. Moving over to uh, the uh, currencies, starting with the dollar. The dollar pulls back. It didn't actually uh, get into these two big bars. I think that's the target, probably in front of the Fed. 
The highest of those two is 24.10. Today we got to 24.18. I suspect it's going to try to get into those. And that's going to continue to push the gold market, the silver market higher, most likely in the short term. Remember that big reversal on Friday. You know, I told members you're going to see follow through, right? So what you saw Friday at some point this week, it's going to do the same thing again. Gold spiked on that move. Let me draw these out here real quick. So this was this was the uh, Thursday close. There's the Friday gap open. You get a three-day consolidation. What do you do? You gap it again. That's exactly what you'd expect should happen. That is what happened. Gold now, if you look at it on a weekly basis, is coming back into the big bar. Top of that big bar, that was the spike high. That was 120.84. Uh, you're going to hit into that tomorrow. You almost got into it uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, trading day today. If you get into that, and get over it and stay over it then you're going to try to hit the highs again at 124. That's the gold market. Silver market looking about the same. I'm not going to go into it but you can look at it yourself. you got about the same story. The oil market all continues to barrel higher. Again gets another leg going. It's been doing this uh, repeatedly. If you just go back and look at this and this is a market that I thought would take a rest. But if you go back and just map these out one after another, nested ABCD structures, all of them completing over and over and over again, just keep mapping them out. This one's got a target up here now. You got another nested ABCD structure inside of it. So you're probably going to get a pause and then you're eventually going to try to make one more move to the top and finish off this last one. All market strong, all market continues to help uh, the indexes uh, in general although they did start to pull back a little bit today which is the question of the night from one of the members let me look at that and that question had to do with the energy sector and so the question was is you know is there in particular there was two that he pointed out wanted to know whether they were viable one was Chevron the other one was uh, Halliburton so we're gonna look at those but I'm gonna start with the sector itself now if we pull over the trading cube which is kinda of part of the question that's being asked uh, the question was, with the short-term uh, bullish, in this case, uh, su it was, it was a, uh, a suspect bullish. That's what the red tells you. This is, this is uh, the bullish one here is green telling you it's confirmed. That means when you broke over a swing point high, you did it with extra, you know, with more volume uh, than the bar that was there that you were breaking over. But, it, but the point here is that this number you see underneath it is called mean time to failure. Mean time to failure is a method of looking at how long it, 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 this particular trend uh, should continue. And that when you get up into about the 70-80% range, typically that is where it's going to have trouble continuing. In other words, get some sort of a pause, change trend, go back to sideways, and then try and regenerate. Now in the case of the XLE what you really have is you had bearish bearish here before now sideways trying to go bullish and bullish on the short term time frame. So short term time frame getting towards that extended mark in other words at some point this is going to try and break a swing point low. Now if we if we were to uh, look at the schedule we'd see that it's about another week and a half two weeks this thing could continue and at that point it would be very stretched. So you've got another maybe a week, week and a half. Now, if you go back to here, if you're going to break a swing point low, you got to find a swing point. Well, the lowest one's down here, but we also know that after six bars, another one print. This one's going to print in another bar. And so you're going to have a swing point low sitting at about 66. You're trading right now at about 69. So that says about $3 lower. That's about 5% at this particular point. But note, if you do that, there's two things happening. One is that would be a bullish retest regenerate off that prior swing point high that it just broke. The second thing is that if you came back into this area, this swing point low now would be almost in that, that area. So the ideal would be that you'd probably come down here and break it and then just head back up again, which is the ideal scenario that you want when you're looking at something like that. So uh, when we look at the... Um, the XLE, XLE actually looks pretty well. When you do get a pullback, it's probably going to get bought. If we move over to Chevron, which was uh, one of the questions, Chevron getting ready has already broken three swing point highs here, gets over them on that bar, volume expands, stops get blown out more than likely. Now you're going for this last swing point high on the daily. 
let's move it to the weekly on the weekly you have this nice kind of a, a cup and handle if you're doing the general you know classical ta type stuff and it's up here hanging at the top on the on kind of the handle part of it now if if you do what I do and that is I look at volume at key resistance and support zones this was your breakout right that was where you broke it out you can see the volume here wasn't as heavy because it's red if you go back and line them up you'd be able to see that in fact it didn't have enough volume to get over it but it did get over it and then came back and tested that's your retest regen off that prior swing point high now it's trying to push higher if it breaks one more swing point high, it's only on a daily. You're not getting it on multiple time frames. That says that more than likely, right, you are going to probably retrace after a little bit more juice. So going back to the question, is it time to buy? No, I think you try to buy the retrace. And so if I go back to the daily chart, and let me pull it back here one more time and get the daily back up, where would your retrace be? Well, it's not very low. It's back into these swing point highs. So anything back in this 102 area, probably the 100 area, you know, par, uh, all of that looks good. It should probably not get very far below this low, which is 101. So 101 and 101.6. So anywhere between about 101.6, 102 is probably a good area. Let's look at Halliburton. I haven't looked at this chart either. Let's see what this one looks like. I'm suspecting it looks about the same. Actually, it looks better. This one just got a nice big spike up on the daily. Breaks two swing point highs. Uh, one there, and there was probably one off the chart over here somewhere. And then if we look at the weekly, so this one's already got the juice going. And you've also got, you know, when you get something like this, what you want to do is look at your ABCD structures and do your projections and ask yourself, where can this thing go? Looks to me like it's almost to where it wants to go. And matter of fact, I think it probably just completed it on the weekly. So Halliburton is the more extended one. I think the one you probably ought to pursue is Chevron until Halliburton gets a little bit more of a consolidation and maybe some sort of a retrace. Halliburton actually on this time frame has nested ABCD structures. So you actually have another one that could get it a little bit higher as well, maybe into this swing point high. Both of them look pretty good. The whole, of course, the whole energy sector looks pretty good. And as long as oil keeps going up, they're going to go with it. Folks, what do we expect tomorrow? We expect uh, this market probably to grind some more. I don't know that it's ready to give it up yet. you got a lot of mixed signals. Asia looks like it's going to try and pull back a little bit. Europe sideways to higher maybe. Our markets, U.S. markets, going to try and grind higher again at least probably to start the day. That's it for tonight. Thanks for joining me. Have a great one. Take care. Good night.